Welcome to Real Time Review. I'm your host, Jesse Nussman. With me, as always, fellow Atlanta film critic, Jason Evans. Jason, we have a, a Molotov cocktail of a movie <laughs> to talk about this, this week. I can't, but I can't believe how many people are really interested. In, like, I mentioned to someone that I'd went and seen this film, and they were ju- like, just dialed in. There. I want to hear yeah. so much about it. Yeah, we're of course talking about Civil, Civil War, War, the yeah. newest film from science fiction writer, director. I mean, Al- Alex Garland has, like, worked in just yeah. about any medium, not just movies, but books, video games, television. Um, and this is probably one of the more curious titles of the movie. Like you, I've had a bunch of people, even not knowing that I had seen it already, kind of come up to me and ask, like, what is this movie? What is it about? Um, I, They've done a great job in the marketing of telling us sort of the concept while not telling us so much that people are like, oh, I'm turned on or turned off. It's just people want to know more. Right, exactly. 19 states have seceded. The United States Army ramps up activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. The three-term president assures the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. Let me know if you want to try anything on. I guess we heard there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news, seems like it's for the best. So I think this is a movie we might disagree a bit of in, in, in our opinions about, which maybe fits in with the theme. We will have our own yeah. little civil war here. Um, I think a brief plot synopsis is this is set in kind of an alternate present day America right. where the country has been sort of ripped apart into different factions and different states are aligned with each other and we essentially follow a group of journalists, the main one of which is played by Kirsten Dunst yes. who's a war photographer as they sort of make their way to Washington D.C. and it's kind of this like, you know, Alex Garland's been comparing this a lot to Apocalypse Now and like th- it has that sort of like you're going down the river and just sort of like sure. encountering different scenarios that sort of give you kind of a, a, a quick little peek in d- under under the curtain of like what might be happening in this and, sort of alternate reality. If I can, I think it is important for people to understand, as you said, it's an alternate reality. The, the different forces in this film are the federal government based in Washington, what's called the Western Forces, which is an alliance of California and Texas. And then they also talk about the fact that there is a, a, a secessionist so force like Florida, in Florida, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is really important for people to understand Alex Garland intentionally did not want to make this film about politics, mm-hmm. about present politics, or about the present divide that's happening in America, which undoubtedly exists. We, we experience it right. all the time. And, uh, and uh, he didn't want to do that. feeding into the fascination of this movie of like, I, yeah. there's, there's no question in my mind that it's, it's a bit of a savvy troll marketing for A24 putting this out in an election year. Yeah. Even though the movie, I think Alex Garland is not really interested in kind of any kind of ideological differences between right or left. There is never a discussion of a political issue. There is never anything in it that speaks to a, a political divide other than there's one line fairly early on that where they say the president is in his third term. Right. Uh, and even that is like you know, not super controversial. I don't think you'd have people saying, I want to kill my neighbor because the president's serving a third term. Right, and (laughs) even I think Garland is, you know, Garland is someone who I think is a little... You know, he he's a little caged off in terms of, like, not wanting to reveal too much to his audience. I think he's also obviously a provocateur. He likes to sort of poke and prod his audience. And there are little, like dashes of dialogue here and there where like my interpretation like there's a a bit of dialogue around kind of like in a quote antifa massacre but i think garland in sort of giving these kind of little nods towards like things and and political ideologies in our current world is sort of poking the audience to sort of say like if you try and sort of graph any kind of ideology onto this movie, you're just going to tie yourself yeah. in knots. And him I, almost having fun with like, if if you're really trying to sort of place this into a current election year environment, you're totally missing you're the point fail. of my movie. Yeah, and I think it's important for people to understand what you just said. Don't go into this movie expecting to get any discussion of the political divide in America. It is not about politics. Mm-hmm. Now, my problem with the film, if we can move on to... Yeah, let's, let's my talk problem, about what this movie actually does, not yeah, what it doesn't do. Exactly. My problem with the film is, it's not about politics. I'm not really sure what it is about. 
it, it, it's a gorgeous film. There's a ton of haunting imagery in it. Alex Garland knows that. Look, very intense. I, I almost was like, I might need to step out of the theater in a couple moments. Yeah, I, I mean, it is jarring to see scenes of war, scenes of the aftermath of war in very recognizable American situations. There are highway overpasses that we see as we drive around Atlanta mm -hmm. or any place all the time with bodies dangling from them. Right. Uh, there are, you know, cars, cities burning, all kinds of stuff like that, that absolutely looks like America if there was an attack. So in that regard, I think it's powerful mm -hmm. for, for us to experience that. But I don't know what else Alex Garland had to say in this film. I thought it was going to be a film about journalism. I'm a longtime journalist. Mm -hmm. I'm a film critic, but I also work at CNN. And I've been at CNN for more than 30 years. And I thought he was going to say something about the importance of telling stories, the importance of capturing certain images, something related to journalism. Not really. So if it's not about politics, it's not about journalism, I'm not sure what it is about. Um, so this is where I'll disagree with you. Yeah. I actually think this movie is about a ton of stuff. And I think maybe kind of boiling down to, I think you already kind of hit on the first thing I think this movie is primarily about in that this is Alex Garland, I think, really... This is a movie, I think, that is ultimately about, like, our desensitization to violence. Like, are we as Americans desensitized to images of war? And there is sort of... I think the idea of making this about a civil war is saying, like, I'm going to take all of this horrific war imagery that... You know, forget even Hollywood war movies. Like, you can go on you the the whole Iraq war is on YouTube. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, like you can watch this stuff pretty easily online. And Garland sort of asking this question to his audience of like, well, are you so desensitized to that that can you can you feel something by seeing American citizens being shot down by soldiers, being seeing cities blown to bits? And I think he is challenging us to think about our relationship to the military. I thought it was interesting how this movie, there's so many sequences of, of combat in here that if it was just like, you know, any other war movie we would think of as kind of this rah, rah, like, look how awesome our military is. But like, the military is scary in this movie. And there's the real fear well, but of for the like, most part, a lot of the military that we encounter in this movie are regular citizens who've mm -hmm. taken up guns. Yeah. So I don't, um, I I'm going to push back. I don't think that it was a film that wanted us to question the role of the military in our society. Most of the big battles that we get, I mean, first of all, but don't you think that we, also we don't even identify the military into... for the most part. Like most of the fights, I had no idea who was fighting against who. But I think that's intentional. I think he's clouding everything into sort of like this all, it, it all just becomes violence at a certain point. And if, I think it's notable that he's making the characters journalists not soldiers so we don't become attached to any kind of ideological side and by the end yeah it kind of becomes this sort of concophonous sort of orgy of violence in which it's like i don't know who the good guys are who the bad guys are when the journalists stop at like a gas station they're like we don't know who these people are aligned with it's just people with guns and in some ways alex garland may be saying like a lot of stuff about you know not just our military but like the prevalence of guns in our society and just at, at what point is it like we as Americans have the tools to basically just create our own Armageddon the only thing standing in our way is just our own you know humanity towards our neighbor and like once that goes away like there's nothing to stop us from destroying ourselves well but so my response to that would be if that is what Alex Garland wanted to say he needed to do a better job of injecting that into the story because for the most part the story is either fighting slash haunted imagery or journalists on the road um and i don't think i, I walked out of the film you may have gotten that from the film i mm. walked out of that film and i didn't get any of that yeah so in that I, regard I think a lot Alex, of it is is very he i think he's wanting the audience to kind of come to the table a little bit like like i, I think our big disagreement is sort of like it's left very vague and very much like I want you to fill in the gaps of like what this is. Like I don't want to. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to spell it out for you. You know, we had a little bit of a disagreement walking out about like, you know, in terms of how this deal movie deals with journalism. I actually think this movie has a lot to say about journalism, but it's maybe probing this provocative question of like, does journalism do images matter? And like, is the idea of 
Kirsten Dunst's character and all these other journalists sort of going out in the field and capturing these images of the atrocities of war, does that ultimately fall on deaf ears? There's, I thought this like well, really one of the, they never they never even transmit their we never get any sense of them transmitting their images back for people to see, to, for people to be impacted by. I, 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 I hear you, mm-hmm. and I can see how those could have been potential themes that he had, but he, was, he kept them so distant, and mm-hmm. he's asking so much of the audience that I think, I think he fails to get there. I, I want to be clear, by the way, it's not a bad film. No. Not, uh, again, tons of haunting imagery, mm-hmm. really beautifully shot and put together. Alex Garland is someone... I was really intrigued at the fact that, uh, you know, the films that people are going to know that he's made, Ex Machina which is a, a brilliant sci-fi movie, one of the best sci-fi movies of the past decade, True, for sure. Maybe, maybe the best. Uh, Ex Machina is very confined. Mm-hmm. It is all in a building, in a house, super confined. And then he did Annihilation, mm-hmm. which is like a weird, like otherworldly kind of situation. What do, you, what do you think about that movie? I actually really like that movie, but... I, I, uh, again, I, I like a lot of what he did in Annihilation. I, I don't mind some of the vagueness of the story in Annihilation, mm-hmm. Annihilation. I enjoy, but I understand why a lot of audiences are like, what is happening here? And it's very confused. odd. Yeah, <laughs> but but in terms of imagery, my point was in Annihilation, we get a lot of like otherworldly. We're transforming Earth, recognizable places into something different. And then in this film, his scope is even larger. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we go all up and down the East Coast, and every place we go, almost every place, we encounter you know, little tinges of what war would be like in those places. So he captures that really interestingly, and I think that's the strongest part of the film. The other thing I really liked about it is the final 20, 30 minutes is absolutely pulse-pounding. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give away what's happening, but you are in there as a major fight is yes. happening, and it's really dramatic. But the problem I have with it, again, the lights came up, and I sat back and I thought to myself, what did I just experience? And I thought, I don't know what he was trying to make me feel other than look at these really interesting images. I don't think it's a spoiler necessarily because it's in the trailer, but I'm curious to get your thoughts on there's the one scene where they stop in this town and we've we've heard little bits of dialogue about kind of like some people who are kind of just ignoring that the war is going on, but they stop in this one kind of small like Mayberry-esque town that seemingly is like going on business as usual. Yeah. Everyone's kind of like, eh, let's not, the, let's not, Let's not worry as far as they're concerned, the war on. doesn't happen. I was yeah. super bothered by that scene. And here, here's why. Uh, no one else in the movie seems like they want this war. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure, I'm sure there's some people who are fighting who are angry and the such. But for the most part, we don't encounter Americans who are like, I hate my neighbor so much that I want to kill them. So suddenly we, we spend some time with a town where they've just decided, eh, we're not going to fight with each other. Well, why couldn't other places decide that? And, and Alex Garland, as the writer and, di- and director of this film, what's your point in having an oasis that is unaffected mm-hmm. and not sort of telling us more about what's going on there, why that place is different from the town down the road where they've got bodies strung up from the local drive-in theater? See, I, my kind of interpretation of that scene was kind of getting into kind of what I was talking about with, like, the, you know, the journalism aspect of it, of that being, like, a scene of... Garland sort of really pointing and and kind of feeding into this whole idea of the movie of like, do we just sort of ignore war violence? Do we ignore the violence that like we inflict on other people, the violence we inflict on our, on our neighbors and that being, you know, this, this sort of little allegory bubble for just sort of people who are like, I don't want to be bothered with this like bad news. But if that was his point, then the, the journalist characters that we spend the entire film with who are very much an avatar for the audience. They are the only characters that the audience is supposed to relate to because we don't, frankly, know anyone else right. in the film that well. Th- then those journalists should have commented on that in some way. They should have... Uh, he has the ability to tell us a little bit more of the point he's trying to make, but he never does it. Yeah. And that's my problem with the film. Again, I'll, I don't think it's a bad film. I just think it's a film that could have done more. It's a film that's really going to come down to how much are you wanting kind of Garland to sort of like underline like what his points are versus like how willing are you just to sort of kind of like let the just sort of the the imagery and just what he's putting on screen speak for itself. And I think that makes for, you know, a fascinating conversation like we're having, sure. it, you know, whether people like this, when we were walking out of the, the screening, we were like catching up with a lot of our other film critic colleagues. And it is exciting to kind of walk out of something 
of I I will one thousand percent like warn people this is a very tough sit. It is a very intense movie. Yes. But I think it is exciting to have something that is this thorny and provocative out into the world because it sparks this kind of like like what we are having is a fascinating debate about art and yeah. you know we we can rip at each other's throats over over what we thought about this bit or that bit but it's exciting that this movie i i think it is worth seeing for just sort of like it'll spark an interesting conversation afterwards about what worked what is it saying about america is it ultimately saying anything other than just sort of like war is hell which we've seen in all of a bunch of billions of other movies yeah i, I again i guess my bottom line is i would rather have walked out of the theater and discuss the themes of the movie versus what we did, which is we walked to the theater and we all discussed whether there were themes in the movie. <laughs> and there's a difference in those two conversations as you and I have just had here. Sure. Well, uh, Jason, we could sit here for probably like five hours and talk <laughs> about Civil War, but um, unfortunately we don't have that kind of time. Uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, Guy Ritchie's new movie, um, which the name escapes me because it's got one of those like really complicated names that like barely fits on the poster. It's like uh, yeah, it's the, like ministry the, the Ministry of, of Ungentlemanly Well Soldier work. Boys yeah. or something. Um, and then we'll talk about a movie that you and I both really enjoyed, which is uh, Luca Guadagnino's Challengers. Which, wow, I um, can't wait for that. Uh, we, we're, we're under so embargo, good. we can't say too much, but um, I think that'll it's be a fun so episode. Good. Yes, it'll <laughs> be fun. But uh, until that day, we will catch you at the movies.